Okay, we made it to the final uh, lecture of the class. Congratulations! And I am making this video once again because uh, I already made it and I realized that the sound wasn't in. So I have to make it all over again. I hate my life. <sighs> okay, so um, we're just going to take a look at a um, very smaller version of Binary Bomb. If you're already working with Binary Bomb, this is a pretty useless video at this point because this is only going to help you with Binary Bomb. And if you are getting started with it, this is going to give you some idea of how to get started and all of those and take care of all of your confusions and stuff. And yeah, what else? Well, yeah, this is the last lecture. And all the files like this um, these are all available in the course website so if you want to test it by yourself do it by all means and this is not going to be in your exam this is only helpful for you for your binary bomb so we are going to take a look at this function which is it's taking care of like looking at um, two arcs arguments and then it's calling arc uh, bomb with arc v1 okay so um, we know that it only takes in one parameter because arc c is equals to because the first one is our first parameter and this is the second. So we know that if we are calling it with whom we are getting segmentation fault. We are calling it with please don't do that. Still segmentation fault. We are calling it with what do you want. We are still getting segmentation fault. So we will see how to get rid of that. Okay. So normally what we do is run GDB. We are um, setting our breakpoint in main. We are running it with our parameter home. We are doing next, we are over here. Uh, we check our value, uh, argv1 with, which is home. So it makes sense. We do a next, we get segmentation fault. So we know that this is the particular place where it's happening, right? With the backtrace, we can see that this is where it happened. So instead of doing next, we are going to do step. So we are going to go inside this bomb function. After that, we are going to use this function or command called disassemble. Disassemble basically means dis disassemble. So what it's going to do is even though we do not have access inside the object file, we can still see its assembly equivalent because otherwise um, the object like everything is an assembly and that's why it actually is readable by the machine um, so whenever you write a c code everything is turned into like zero ones and all of those right what disassemble does is it turns that zero and one into a readable assembly version and if you understand assembly you understand the whole um, organization of the program itself and by making a little bit changes here and there, you basically do the hacking, okay? So um, after we do SM, this SM, we get the assembly version of it. And these are pretty familiar at this point. We do, you know, the stack. Um, we are basically setting, setting up the stack, right? Then we are um, putting our value, like th this is our parameter, right? We are putting it inside uh, rbp minus 28 we are doing some sort of comparison with rbp minus 28 we are doing like comparing against zero and if it's not equal to um, zero it goes to line bomb 24 otherwise it's going to explode okay so this is the whole organization of the code i can um, go about it one by one in one go but like for now this is what it looks like, okay? So if you want to move forward in your code, you are supposed to use ni, okay? Let's see, over here we used ni. So at first it was pointing over here, now it's pointing to the next line, okay? So using ni, we are going to move forward. We are checking over here whether it's equal to zero or not. If it's not equal to zero, it moves here, otherwise, it moves here and which goes and explodes the bomb okay so over here we are basically checking whether our um, string is null or not okay 
So let's see what actually happens when it goes uh, to the part where it exports the bomb. Uh, it puts 0 into EAX and then it tries to move something that is pointed by 0. And we know that if we try to um, dereference a null, it going, it's going to create a segmentation fault. And that's why the bomb was exploding in this case basically. Mm, as mentioned over here, it was trying to dereference null. So we know that we do not want to send anything um, zero inside that um, binary, uh, well, as a parameter, okay? So um, let's see what happens over here. So it checks whether it's equal to zero or not, otherwise it moves to this line, right? So we are putting something of a 61 into RBV minus 19. We can actually see the organization of the stack and all of those like we can um, check the address by using p x and we see that this is its address rpp minus 28 address is this and if we do a minus we can see that the um, mathematics is consistent so what is happening over here is rbp minus 28 is a pointer that points to a character array and we know that the character array itself is a pointer so it's a pointer of a pointer okay so from this we know that rbp minus 28 is a pointer of a pointer so if we want to get the value of it we have to dereference it twice and gdb is kind of dumb so um, it doesn't understand what is inside RBP. So you have to do a type casting of this. So um, now GDB knows that it's a type of character pointer pointer. Then you dereference it. Okay. So now you are actually getting the address of where it points to our um, string. So right now, this was our RBP minus 28. By doing it um, dereference once, we are over here, the character pointer. And now we know that we have to dereference it again. So over here, we are doing a dereference again, and we are getting the value of 68. Um, OX68 is basically equal to H. So how do we print that? We have to typecast it again. Okay. By doing typecasting again, we are getting our value H. So we know that our RBP minus 28 is holding on to the value of H. So this is actually um, like in RBP minus 28, we actually have a pointer that points to our string that was sent as a parameter. Okay so um yeah we we already know this so we have some other stuff going on in the code we have something like um we are putting 61 into one of the variables we are putting 7a into another variable uh, we are putting zero into of the variables and then we are moving on with our um like checking and all of those okay so one thing we can see over here is if we typecast um, this to character, we see that it's the value A. And over here, if we do typecasting over here, we see that this is the value of Z. So we are working with ASCII value of A and Z. Okay. And we are putting some zero in these two variables. There might be some sort of counter or like, um, you know, loop iterator or something like that. We'll see. So the first thing that happens over here is after we move the value to RBP minus 18, we are doing a jump, okay? Uh, instead of going here, we are doing a jump. Then we are moving um, minus RBP minus 28 to RAX. We are moving that value to EAX. We are doing some sort of test. What test is? Well, I'll be explaining soon enough. And if it's not equal to um, zero, it goes over here. So what basically is happening over here is um, test is basically AL and AL. What it does is it checks whether um, that value is zero or not. Okay. 
because um, it can be two things either this or this right so um, if the value is not um, zero it's going to be a non-zero and it's going to be true okay and if it's zero then um, this condition is not going to be met so yeah let's see what's happening over here we're getting our value we are doing a comparison uh, against um, rpp minus 19 if it's greater than okay so in rpp minus 19 we put the value a if it's greater than um, then it's going to uh, jump over here if it's not greater than that it's going to jump to a line where it um, does a segmentation fall because we know that we saw that bomb plus uh, 168 was creating the segmentation fault right so we moved here then we are getting the value again we are checking it against this um, address which had the value z then we are checking whether it's less than equal to it if it is then move here otherwise segmentation fall so from this we can see that our uh, first check is whether it's greater than equal a our second check is whether it's less than equal c so whatever we send as our parameter it has to be uh, within this range okay then we are doing a comparison against ox71 the ox71 is basically q we'll see that later and we are doing a check if it's not equal to that um, then it jumps over here otherwise it puts one inside this variable okay then we are adding one to our rbp minus 18 so with that it basically means that if it was pointing to h now it's going to point to the next one m okay then we are doing a add of rbp minus 8 then we are moving our rbp minus 18 to rax we are moving our um, like we are moving our value of uh, whatever is pointed by rax which is this m and we are putting it into eax we are testing whether eax is null or not if it is not then go back on the top again and keep running till it hits the null okay so um after running the whole loop we know that it's it has to be greater than a it has to be less than z and it has to be um like at least once it has to be equal to q so if our um, string has like if all the um, characters in our string is greater than equal a and less than equal z and has at least one q it should not blow like it should not have a sec fault that's what we just saw right so we are going to send in driver be quiet it still fails okay so um, this be quiet is kind of like a tradition of Virginia Tech because this is the, um, our professor McQueen's favorite quote he loves to shout be quiet in the class so yeah I, I'm really sad you all didn't get to experience it it's it's a pretty fun experience definitely but yeah we saw that we still failed so there are some more um, constraints in the um, bomb function that has to be met so that it doesn't do a segmentation fault okay well that's for you to find out right I mean you're already working on binary bomb so it should be pretty easy for you because this is a very smaller version of binary bomb the other thing it does is it just checks whether it's um, greater than like um, the length of the string is greater than 9 or not in that case um, it doesn't blow up so yeah this is the last lecture of this class um, 
in Monday, I'm probably going to talk about stuff that was um, like asked by the students in the class, like all of the stuff you are actually struggling with and what are the stuff you should know about like Linux, C and assembly. Other than that, you are done. And the next uh, obstacle you have are, well, the GIS assignment if you're still not done and the binary bomb and then the final exam. So I wish you best of luck and um, yeah. Oh, if you have any other questions, like anything you want me to cover in your, um, in the summary class, um, write it in the comments. I'll see you next time.